Hey everyone, the game chief here. Today I'm going to be doing a video on how to run more than one Daisy standalone server on a single dedicated machine. This video topic has been requested by a few different people, so I figured I'd go ahead and make it and get it out there for the people who are interested in having more than one server running at once. And once again, I just want to state I'm starting off where I left off in my last Daisy video. So if you're confused, I highly recommend you start from the beginning of the series. There are links in the description and on the right hand side of your screen right now. And those videos just kind of explain how to create the server as this video is just expanding on the previous knowledge. So it's important to know the previous videos and know exactly what was already set up. And this video is broken into four different parts and there are timestamps on your screen right now. All right, so let's get started with part one. So I'm gonna go ahead and remote into my server here. And I remote it in. And the first thing we're gonna to need to do is go to our existing Daisy server folder. So go in here, this computer, and then in this folder, servers. And this is where I have my server set up. And part one is gonna be copying a couple files as we need to make copies of it for the second server to run. So we're gonna go inside our Daisy folder. And the first thing we're gonna copy is the Daisy server exe. So we're gonna go ahead and copy this, paste it, and it's gonna make a copy. And then we're gonna to wanna to rename this. And just to make it easy, I'm gonna keep it the exact same name, except add an underscore one at the end. That way it's just easier later down the line. And then I also need to do that for the Daisy mod server. Again, just gonna go ahead and rename that, add an underscore one to the end. And I need to do that with my start batch file as well. And along with my config file, so my server DZ. So I'll copy that and rename it. And here's kind of an optional step. If you're gonna be running the same mods on both servers, you don't need to change this. However, if you're gonna be running different mods, you're gonna to wanna to make a copy of your mod list. But in this case, in this example, I'm just gonna be running the exact same mods on both servers. So I don't need to make a copy of the mod list. If you do decide you wanna run different mods, make a copy of the mod list, and I'll note later on what else you need to change, but just make sure you make a copy of the mod list and add an underscore one to the end. And then we're gonna go ahead and go into MP missions. Again, this is where all your missions are stored and you're gonna to wanna to find your current folder that you're using on your existing server. In my case, I'm using Chinaris, so this is the folder. For the second server, I want it to be Chinaris as well. So I'm actually going to make a copy of this folder. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove that copy from the end and then I'm going to go over to Daisy offline and then I'm going to add underscore one at the end here. Um, it's important not to add it after the dot or after the Chinaris plus as this is the map name. So it's required to keep that the same or else it will break the server. And it's important to note um, what is stored inside of these folders. So you have your database files along with any extra things you've changed. So in this case, um, players, uh, buildings, cars, stuff like that, that is all stored in a database file. So you gotta keep in mind your two servers will have completely different databases, so stats won't sync across them, which is ideally preferred. That way you don't have people jumping on an empty server to get looted up and then jump onto the main server. And also it will cause a lot of position issues later on once you have several people on. So as of right now, you gotta keep these separated. It's important to note if you make any customization to your mission file that you have to copy those changes over to the second folder. Say you customize your init.c um, file in case you change some stuff around, uh, maybe some custom spawn or something like that. Or if you go into the DB folder and changes the you change the types file in any way just to you know adjust spawn rates, you gotta make sure any changes you make in your main folder, since we are using the secondary folder for the second server, the second database, any changes you make, any config changes, you wanna make it to this one, that way it matches, unless you're not trying to make it match, but in most cases you'll wanna do that, so just keep that in mind. Next, we're gonna go ahead and back out and go into the Beck folder, and then we'll go ahead and copy the Beck exe, and again, we're just gonna be renaming this to underscore one, and then we're gonna go inside the config folder for Beck as well, and we're gonna be copying the config file as well. And then we're also gonna be making a copy of the scheduler file. So this is what does auto restarts. The reason why we're gonna be changing this is because we're gonna to need to offset the second server um, so they don't restart at the exact same time. If they restart at the same time, you're gonna be trying to log into Steam CMD at the same time and it's just gonna break. Um, 
because the program will already be in use. Um, even if you make a second copy of Steam CMD, your account will be being used um, two times at once, which doesn't always play nicely. So I recommend always offsetting it by at least like 10 minutes um, or 30 minutes. In this case, I'm gonna set it up to offset it by 30 minutes. And I need to add a one in there actually. And then what you can do is you can actually make copies of the admins file, uh, the bad names, bad words, all these other files if you wanted to. However, I assume you're going to be keeping the same admins and the same blacklist of words, so we shouldn't need to change that. But if you did want to change that, you would just, you know, make a copy, rename it, and then you would edit it in the config, which we'll get to in a few minutes. And then for part two, we need to modify a few files. So in this case, the first thing we need to do is go into our DayZ folder, and then we need to modify the start server underscore one dot bat. So we're gonna go ahead and open this in our preferred text editor. You can use Notepad++. I'm gonna use Atom, which I actually already have open. And then I'm just gonna select that file again, which is right there. So start server underscore one dot bat. And there's a few things we're gonna wanna change here. The first thing is this line right here. Um, this is kind of optional, but this is how you can tell which server is which. So in this case, I'm going to add this on and say that this is server two, just so you know, on the top bar, um, it'll keep track of which server this window is in. And the second thing that you'll want to change if you do decide to make any changes to your mods is your mod list. So if you made a different, a copy of your mod list and you're running different mods, make sure you change this to your new mod list name. And then next we're going to go down to this line right here, line 21. This is the line that handles checking to see if the DAISY server is currently open. So we need to rename this to our new EXE name. In this case, we're just going to add an underscore one to it. And then we'll do the same thing on line 28 here with Beck. So we're going to go ahead and add underscore one here just so it knows which Beck EXE we're talking about. And then we'll scroll down a bit more to line 43. Again, we just got to change these EXE names. So we'll add the underscore one as that's what we chose to do with our new EXEs. And then we'll scroll all the way down to line 71. This is the line that starts our server. Again, we're just gonna add underscore one to the mod server as we change that to underscore one. And then instance ID, we need to change this to two um, because this is not the same instance of instance ID one or the other server. And then our config file, we're using underscore one again. Uh, profiles can stay the same. You can create a separate profile for a second server. I would only really see this necessary if you were running completely different servers, completely different like mods, nothing relating to each other at all, you could change this. But in most cases, you can run multiple servers out of the same profile folder. And then next, we're going to go ahead and change our game port. Um, 2302 is the default game port, but we are currently using that on our other server, so we need to come up with another port. In this case, I'm going to do 2402 just to bump it up a bit. Again, if you are behind a firewall or need port forwarding, make sure this port is open to your server. And then before we forget, there is one other parameter we have to add now. What we're going to add is the dash daisy server parameter. And basically we tell it the exe name because we changed it. So we can go check what our exe name is. In this case, it's that underscore one. And that way we can specify it. That way it knows what exe it should be launching. So that is the correct one. So we'll go ahead and save that. Then we'll scroll on over to line 90. Uh, this one just starts back. So we need to tell it to start the, the underscore one. And then we need to tell it to use the underscore one config file as well. And that's about it for this file. So we're gonna go ahead and save that. And then the next thing we're gonna to need to do is we need to edit our config file. So our server dz underscore one config. So I have that right here. And now that I quickly fixed the syntax highlighting, that way it's just a bit easier to read, we can go ahead and make some modifications to this file. So first thing is gonna be on line eight, you're probably gonna to wanna to change your server host name. So in this case, I'm just gonna change this to, um, actually instead of that, I'm just gonna do number two, as this is our second server. And then we'll go ahead and go along to line 11, so our log file. Uh, in this case, we're just gonna add an underscore one to this, so it'll create a new log file. Um, that way the two server logs aren't combined together. And then line 12, this is gonna be our Steam query port. Again, we have to have a unique port for this, and this one's currently being used for our first one. So in this case, I'm just gonna be 28016. And then again, as I said, if you're behind a firewall or if you need port forwarding, make sure your server is open to that port or else you're gonna have some issues. 
And then the last thing we're going to want to change is all the way down on line 68. And then this is going to be changing our mission. In this case, we're still going to be on Chinaris, but we do have that underscore one for our second mission folder with our separate database. So we'll just go ahead and make that adjustment and we'll go ahead and save the file. Next, we're going to make some adjustments in Beck. So we'll go over to Beck config and then our new config file right here. We're going to edit that. So I'll jump over there and we'll open that up. So the first thing we're going to change is on line 15. We need to tell it what port we're running the game server on. Since we're not on 2302, because that's the other server, we're going to go ahead and change that to our new port, which is 2402. And then we'll scroll on down to line 94. And then we'll uncomment this. And then we're going to go ahead and specify our exe name, again, underscore 1. And then we'll go on down to line 112. In our scheduler, we are using that other one, so we'll add underscore 1. So we'll use that. The way this is currently set up, it'll still use the same bad names, whitelist, bad words, all that. If you decided you wanted to make a copy of those and use different bad words or a different whitelist or whatever, you'll want to make sure you add underscore one to that. In our case, we didn't do that, so we can just leave that be and we can go ahead and save the file. And next, we're going to go ahead and open up our scheduler file underscore one. So I'll go ahead and open that up. And then, like I said earlier, we do need to adjust our server restart time slightly. That way they don't restart at the exact same time as it will cause issues with Steam CMD, multiple logins, stuff like that. Um, this is currently the default one I used when I first made the video about how to do automatic restarts. And this still restarts at every 12 hours. Um, what I recommend doing is adding a 30 minute offset or so. So what I can do is uh, this message will say the same as this just tells you it other than we will change it to say that it restarts at 1230. And there we go. And then these are what we're going to need to change. So instead of just 22, it'll be 2230 and uh, same thing here, 2330 and then so on and so forth. Um, if you're still using the exact same config file as I did when I originally created it, I actually have a updated one that I've already done in the description, second link. And we can go and copy that. Um, if we go down here, click in here, control A to highlight everything, control C to copy, go back in here and we can go and replace that as this already has everything offsetted by 30 minutes already. So you don't have to do it manually if you've already done that. If you've edited your scheduler, just make sure you offset everything by a certain time and then change the time listed if necessary. But in this case, it's all done, so we can go and save it. And now that we've gone ahead and made those changes, we can go ahead and do some testing to make sure everything's working properly. So we're gonna go back into our DayZ folder, and then we're gonna launch our first server. But before we do that, we can actually jump into our servers folder, DayZ, and we can make a few small edits. You really don't have to need to do this, but just in case, like in this case, uh, just for Demonstration purposes, I'm going to rename this to server one. Oh, if I could type right. So that way we know that's server one. And then I'll also go into the original start.bat file and I'm going to add on to here saying this is server one instead of two, like the other one says. And then we can go ahead and start our first server, make sure everything works, start a second server, make sure everything works, and make sure they're both working side by side. All right, now that everything is launched, the back is signed in and everything, so we can go ahead and join the server, make sure everything's working fine, then we can launch the second server. And then we have our first server showing up here, so we'll go ahead and join that, make sure it's still working properly. And now that we logged in, we can see everything seems to be working. I can kind of run up this hill away from here. And then we can go ahead and I don't know, just shoot this tree for no reason at all. And now that I'm out of ammo, I can just sit here, log out, and then we can check on the second server. That means so we can go and remote back in and we'll go back into our server folder and we'll go ahead and launch our second server. Then now it's about to go ahead and start server two. As we have server one here, this is server two. And then you notice I do get a firewall prompt. Uh, assuming you have set up your settings just like in the first tutorial uh, about your firewall settings. Uh, let me just move that out of the way. This is set to go ahead and notify us if it blocks an app. 
So it's notified us. So we're going to allow this access or else it won't even be able to get out of your internal firewall. And because we have those settings, it's perfect. We shouldn't need to change anything else on Windows. If you're on a residential connection or you're behind a router, you'll still need to port forward those ports. Um, but for now, that's no longer being limited by our internal firewall on this server. All right, now that we have everything running, we have our first server on this side, our second server on this side, and then so we can go ahead and join our second server and make sure everything's working properly. But before we can do that, we do need to add it to the launcher because it's not gonna be on the launcher. So we're gonna to go to the website. And we'll go to check server. And then you're gonna go ahead and enter your IP. And now that we have our server IP, we'll add a colon again. And then again, we gotta use our query port because we're using a new one, which is 28016. And then we'll go ahead and hit check server. And then as you can see, it added the second server just fine. So we go ahead and minimize this. And it's important to note when you add a server to the launcher, you have to close the launcher and you do have to reload the launcher as it downloads the list on launch. And then we'll go ahead and filter looking for my servers. And we can see both servers are here. We just played this one. They both have their mods showing up and they are showing their different ports. So we'll go ahead and join our second one, make sure that one's working properly. And now that I'm in game, I'm back by these little logs again. Um, I'm not up there because this is a completely different database. Even though I have the same character, I have my ammo back and everything because it's a completely separate database. This just happens to be where I had copied it. So I have everything from that copy right there. And that's about it. We are in game on our second server with no issues. So we can go ahead and log out here. And we can close the game. And then we can go ahead and remote back into our server. And we can see, you know, both of them are still running. We got server one here doing its checks. We have our mod server doing all its mod server stuff. And then we have Beck using its normal config. And then we have the second server, second server again, second server on its separate port. And we have Beck on its separate config again. And after waiting a few minutes, we can see that Beck dropped a few messages in chat, including about automatic restarts every 12 hours. Since this is the first server with our original config, it just says 12 a.m. and 12 p.m. And then this one reflects our modified schedule at 12.30 um, a.m. and 12.30 p.m. as well. And that's about it. We have two different servers running currently. This is scalable, so you could start naming the exes underscore two and go from there. And you're really limited by the hardware power of your machine and by your internet connection, because um, this is technically fully scalable as much as you want. Um, however, if you're going that far scale, there's some other tools you could utilize for mass production of servers. But for the most part, if you're only running, you know, say one server, a dev server, a few other servers, you know, three, something like that, this will work just fine for you. And really, that's about it. There should be some more videos in the next couple coming weeks. Uh, there should be a video about hopefully modifying traders, some common mistakes, a few other things. There's a couple suggestions from commenters on what else to do. So I'm going to be looking into those. And if you guys have any other video suggestions or certain mods you would like to see set up, just feel free to let me know in the comments. If you have any issues, feel free to leave a comment or add me on Discord. It is in the description. And that's about it. Have a good day.